So I'm running out of material. I've got, uh, I don't know, 150 grams or so left of the ore. And I wanted to try something a little bit different. Um, rather than adding a collector metal or uh, iron, I mixed 50 grams of the shaker table concentrates with 300 grams of Chapman flux and then about 100 grams of borax to help thin it. And my goal here is to see if I can recover any gold button at all by oxidizing uh, the base metals and see if we can get a little tiny gold button at the bottom. Okay, here's the slag result from our uh, Chapman flux. It's really quite glassy. Uh, you can see there's no obvious metal at the tip of the cone. So I'll bust that open and see if we get a little tiny gold bead, which is what we hope for. So I busted the tip of that cone out and sure enough, there's a little bit of, uh, I think it's actually a matte button. Okay, so I busted out the mat, which is here, a little tiny bit of mat. Ended up with these two little buttons. There's one and there's one. And there are these two little, little tiny buttons. I don't think they're pure gold. They're, uh, they've got some coppery color to them and maybe a little bit of lead. So if I can get my friend with the XRF gun, I'll zap these and see exactly what we have here. Um, the mat is a little bit troubling down here. You really don't want mat. It, it'll dissolve silver especially. And so if we had a bunch of silver, it's probably ended up in the mat there instead of in the, in the metal buttons. Um, but I'm going to send that slag off for assay and see if there's any precious metals left in the slag. If there's not, we have all of our precious metals down here in the mat and the little bit of metal we got at the bottom. So this is actually pretty encouraging. So with the results from the assays and the XRF, we'll know uh, where most of the gold went on this one. Okay, so here are the results from our assays. And before we get into them, I'm gonna go over a few things. This axis here is the percent recovery. It goes down to 70. This axis along the bottom is the uh, different collector metals we used. And the yellow line is the gold recovery. The gray line is the silver recovery. And even though I ran two samples of each uh, test, they were so close that I averaged them together and that's why we ended up with one point here on the graph even though we ran two samples. So the first thing you'll notice is that even with no collector metal, that little bit that we uh, reduced out ended up with fantastic gold recovery and equally as good silver recovery. I mean, 99% uh, silver and 99 plus percent gold. So that, that went fantastic. The high surface area copper was actually even better. There was three nines recovery of the gold and 99.68% uh, recovery of the silver. The copper bottoms, did about as equally well as the no collector. The silver recovery here is a little bit low and I believe that's because we had such a high amount of silver metal at the bottom of the crucible that we lost a little bit to the slag either through oxidation or a little bit got tied up with some sulfur and was carried into the slag. So even though it looks like our silver recovery is, is really low, there wasn't much silver in the initial assay uh, or in the initial material. And because we added so much silver, I think we lost just a little bit to the slag. The lead, uh, again, did about as, as equal with the, the other, the, the copper and then the no collector. And then this is the results uh, from the Chapman flux, the one that uh, I did kind of after the fact, just to see if we could um, oxidize away all of the metal and be left with a precious metal button. And as you can see, it didn't work very well. We only recovered about 80% of both the gold and silver. So uh, this one proves that we do need a collector metal. You can't just try and oxidize everything if you have a fairly uh, low grade of concentrates that you're trying to smelt. The other thing that I want to talk about here is even though we added different metals at the bottom to act as a collector, the process that went on with this no collector uh, occurred in each of these tests. So now I'm actually concerned, this raises another question, I didn't realize the no collector would be such high results. And so regardless of how well the other uh, metals did as collectors, this process happened in each test. 
because this occurred regardless of what metal we put in the bottom. Okay, so here are the assay results. I wanted to show them to you guys so you can check my math and, and uh, give you all the data here. These are the sample IDs down this, this side here. The first number one and number two are the shaker table cons. That's right off the shaker table. That's the stuff that we were smelting. Number three and four, no collector. Five and six, high surface area copper. Seven and eight were the copper bottoms, silver bottoms, lead bottoms, the Chapman flux, and then number 14 isn't applicable to this experiment. And so they, they did two things. They did a fire assay here for gold and silver, and if the, the value that they came up with was less than was detectable by the fire assay, they came over and they did an ICP finish. And these are in parts per million, and uh, which I believe equates to grams per ton. We can have some f lively discussion in the comment section about if parts per million is equal to grams per ton, even though it doesn't take into consideration the density of the thing you're measuring. It's just a, a, a counting technique, essentially. Um, but anyway, that's how I did it. I equated these all to essentially grams per ton. So the shaker table concentrates, we ended up with the first one was 872 grams per ton, and the second one was 846. So I, I took these numbers, um, and I will show you a calculation by how I went from grams per ton to percent recovery. And one more thing I'll point out here is they, they actually ran a couple of duplicates for me. So uh, this will be important in our next calculation. I'm going to uh, average three of the numbers together. So this is a duplicate of the shaker table concentrates. Um, so I'm going to average these numbers in with the first two to get uh, uh, the average amount of gold in our sample we started with. All right, so the first thing we have to do to determine our percent recovery is figure out how much actual gold we're dealing with. And so these are the assay values in parts per million of the gold and the silver in our shaker table concentrates. And so I took all three of these values and averaged them together. So average there was 863 parts per million gold and 1891 parts per million silver. Then we take that number and because I added 100 grams per charge, we take uh, 100 grams in tons, because this is parts per million, so you gotta get it into how many grams of gold were in the sample. So you multiply by 0 .0001, and that ends up with 0 .0863 grams of gold in our original sample. So that's how much actual gold by weight was in our charge that we put in each time. And same thing with silver. We had 0.1891 grams of silver in our original sample. So now that we know how much gold we had and how much silver we had, we can do the same calculation for what was in the slag, and then you can divide the two together to get the ratio. Okay, so here is our uh, sample calculation of how we ended up with percent recovery. So that we're gonna run uh, our no collector sample. This is sample number three. The assay for the gold was uh, 1.31 parts per million, and assay for silver was 10.1 parts per million. And the slag for this particular sample weighed 260 grams. So we take our uh, assay value for the gold, multiply it by the uh, grams of slag in metric tons, and we end up with the amount of gold in the slag. So we end up with 0 0.0003406 grams of gold in the slag. And then you take the grams of gold in the slag, divide it by the amount we calculated just earlier, uh, the amount of gold we started with in our sample, and you end up with 99.61% recovery. And the same thing, same process for the silver. One more number you guys are gonna need if you're gonna check all my math is the weight of the slag. And so I just wrote them out here. This is the sample number and this is the weight of the slag. So I'm not gonna talk, I'll just go through this real quick and you guys can pause and then get all the, the grams of the slag if you wanna check my math. And the only one that's different here is the one on the bottom. This is the Chapman flux one. I added uh, a lot more flux to that one and I only used 50 grams of shaker table con. So be careful if you're going to do the math on this one. This is half the amount of shaker table cons and quite a bit more flux.